Okay, so this is the part of the show where I get to show off that I've got loads and loads of famous friends. And here's one of them. She's an indie icon. She's one of the most intelligent people I've ever spoken to. And she's just proper cool. It's Louise Wenner. Hello, Louise. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. How are you in this really strange time in this really strange planet? It's so weird. It's been so weird, hasn't it? Oh my God. It's like a flow of still, we're still sort of acclimatizing and it's just overwhelming. And it's just, you guys have been doing brilliant things though. You've been doing such gorgeous videos. I've loved have them. Have you been watching them? I can't believe that. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, we've, we've been working hard on it and um, I'm really, it's given us something to do. Like, I, f I feel like I'm very aware that I'm lucky to have like a creative outlet and something to do in all this time throughout yeah. lockdown. I've just been pouring myself into that and I'd, I'm really glad that I had that. I think that's really important, isn't it? Just keeping yourself busy, just having something, having some sort of purpose. Yeah. Within the whole that's yeah. coming down to you. It's like, I've got something to do. I've got something cool just to put out. And you've, yeah, they've been amazing. What have you been up to? It's been just so busy because we've got kids, you know, and the kids have been off school for three months now. So they've got no school got no structure in their lives we've been i've been homeschooling i've been trying to learn algebra tom this is not good for me no i was never i was never good at school i was i was always arguing with teachers and stuff and just being rowdy generally yeah well that was the fun right that was yeah <laughs> i think so i definitely <laughs> couldn't do algebra did you know it already or have you had to oh, I, I can't do math and like literally my kids are sitting there going you know oh, could teach you how to do this and i'm like I don't know. Should we just it's important to appear to your kids like you are all knowing though and yes but i see i've been able to do this and now now they see the truth you've been exposed, <laughs> I've been exposed. but the chance <laughs> that i am that's not true you're not a chance you don't get to do the things that you've done in life by being a chance you've been on top of the pops loads yes. of times and that was always a dream of mine to go on that and it ain't going to happen for me but was it, it? Was it a dream of yours you got yeah. too young I've, I've obsessed about it ever since i was a kid i used to watch vhs's of top of the pops and like i always just really really wanted to do that and i never ever will but you did loads of times can you describe to me what it's like from like start to finish what's really weird about it is because like you're on this sort of really iconic stage and yeah. you've got the, the pop sign behind you and they're doing the big intro and it's hey it's super on the pops and you just kind of have this little your heart's going you know it's exciting and also it means it means that your mum thinks you're proper right that's it i still haven't had that my mum still tell me to get a job and i'm way too I, i've got all these tattoos on my hands and neck because i never wanted a job i was like I, as soon as i can guarantee i'm not getting a job i'm gonna do it doesn't matter you've met tom jones so please the reason <laughs> i've actually come now is so you can tell me what tom jones is like do you want no, do you want his no. number yeah, I do. Okay. He's, he's, um, he's weird. It was like definitely the most famous person I've ever met. And I'd, I'd like to think that I don't really get too starstruck because I have met famous people. But when, when he was there, it was just like he wasn't real. It was like a hologram or something. It was just like, oh. I'm, assu I'm assuming he actually is a hologram. I think he might be a hologram because he like did a meet and greet with us in his, is it called a vestibule? I'm not, I don't really... It is now. It's called a vestibule. <laughs> well, yeah. we were in that and he did like a meet and greet with us. And it was yeah. just, like his stage time was coming up and I was very aware of that. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to keep him for too long. And then he was just like, okay, I must go now. And then just poof, disappeared. And I swear to God, a second later, he was on stage like, it's not unusual. I was like, what? <laughs> This guy can't be a real man. He's so pro, Tom. He's so pro. Yes, and I'm not. I'm really not. I'm the worst. You know about that because we did a tour together. Oh, you, oh, you gosh, you guys were amazing. You're did the you? best support band we've ever had, and I imagine we'll be supporting you sometimes. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. That really means a lot that you said that. A lot of people after that tour were saying that you're the queen of Britpop and I'm the prince. And I just wanted to know if you could confirm that so I can use it on press. I can confirm this. Amazing. Absolutely. There you go. Prince, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a prince of anything. <laughs> it was a really, really good tour. And, and yeah, we but it's unusual. It was unusual, wasn't it? It was kind of, it was, I think it was just, it really felt like a blast. There was a big sort of blast of joy, I think, in those gigs. And you had that, you guys just sort of, as soon as you go on, I think you bring that to a crowd, you know? I think you just kind of like bring everyone on, you know? It's just, 
it's a really fantastic feeling and it's an amazing thing to go on after that when you've kind of had you guys do that with a crowd it's lovely. it's lovely oh thank you thank you so much that means a lot and yeah i'll warm crowds up for you i, I, I like doing that i just like going on and showing off and i think people are always a bit like what? I know. <laughs> but it's nice so anyway you've just released re-released smile yeah, friday 25 years oh my god it's so long yeah it's exciting it's lovely actually it's lovely it's lovely to have it out there and to see it and see it we keep keep um keep putting up photos of you know getting the album and yeah it's nice it's nice it's in the charts at number seven at the moment is that right at the moment yeah who wow. knows <laughs> it's know. lovely to put it out there and and people have got it again i just it feels quite special looks great as well on yeah on yellow vinyl right, right yellow vinyl yeah well, the album you did before that was called the modern age yeah how different is it releasing the modern age than it was the first time releasing smart like what do you think that it's a different industry to release an album in I think it is a different industry, but we did it, I think because we did it entirely off our own backs for ourselves almost, you know, to begin with. It was just like, we didn't think it would come back and play again. It was a really, it was something we hadn't planned to do, hadn't thought about doing. And then we did the first few gigs and it was such enormous fun to do. We thought, can we make another record? Can we do that? But we didn't put much expectation on it. You know, it was like, what songs can we do? Can I write songs again? Can we actually get back into that sort of, world of recording how would that feel and it was just such it was just such a laugh to do it you know it was just we just kind of got back into that sort of vibe that we'd always had and I think it came out I think it came out all right it did it's a great album it really is and what I really like about your songwriting is a lot of the times you like and I and I want to start doing this and it's been something that I've been thinking about but you put you, you put like your feelings into characters I, I find a lot like and you write yeah. about characters and they become like little stories but I, also since you've, you've written novels and things so I, it's yeah. like you must be good at that like are songs just little tiny novels for you yeah, um, that yeah rhyme? Words. but um it's a tricky thing I think I I think I definitely that's I'm good at that and I love doing that but in some ways it's kind of like that's a it's sort of a protection for me in a way because yeah. I'm not brilliant at sort of putting my own feelings like directly into a song so I, I can't put my own sort of hurts or loves or sort of joys into it so I kind of diffuse it and I do it through a character because I feel more comfortable with that yeah. I'm not one of people that can go here's my misery or my upsets or anything and just like, give them out to the world I can't I find that hard so I kind of do that through characters and that's the way I kind of make that's the way it works for me and other people can do it. other people can just kind of put their hand up and go here you know here's me I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not so good at that. but I, 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 I like the way I do it I think writing anything puts you in like a, a really vulnerable place. Like even, even if I'm just sharing a song that I've written with the band, I always get nervous. Just like, you I, just, feel that. I'm always, I always want to know if other people feel that as well. I can just, I really remember. I don't feel it so much now. I think probably because I'm older and I, I don't worry about it so much, but I can remember just back in the day, back in the nineties and I'd walk into the rehearsal room and I'd go, yeah, I've got this little song and I need to yeah. play it. And kind of, and then someone would say, oh no, that's good. And you'd be like, oh my God, someone likes it. Is you know? it? <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. I, I get like that all the time. Isn't it? It's kind of it's nerve wracking. It's a big deal. And then you get to go out and play it on stage when it's all done yeah. and it's finished, and you have a crowd sing a song back to you, like they do at your gigs all the time, and you get them singing along. And that feeling, you know, it's someone's connected with something you've written. That's it's really enormous isn't it it's a, it's yeah that it, it really is just the most amazing feeling that i've like that's why i just love being on stage so much i had a really hard time because we like signed a record deal and then things didn't go well after that no, and no, no. I, I started getting like this imposter syndrome thing where i was like I, i'm not good enough for this anyway and and that really took a toll on me personally because of the and and it was probably like in my head but just the amount of pressure and expectation that i felt and yeah. it was kind of all on my shoulders and I didn't really know what to do. But then I think, honestly, since we've, we put our album out and seen people's comments and like the people that bought it and there's people in Japan and Australia and Germany. And it's just like, that, I, that's gone now. And I feel like the, the imposter thing has been lifted from me. It's so. really easy to feel that though. You need some, because a lot of what you do, you do, do without any validation at all. Mm. And you just have to, get on with it. You have to have that sort of self belief in what you do. And it's hard to maintain that, especially if the industry around you is crushing you and making things. <laughs> difficult and it was incredibly difficult for you guys i know you went through all kinds of shit with labels and stuff and um that stuff is really hard it's really hard it is it's not it's not really known as a kind industry is it the music industry no. never yeah. mind we both love it yeah yeah 
you wrote a book about how it was different for girls to, well, just different for girls through, through growing up and then to become a pop star. How yeah. do you think it's different for girls than it is boys? Because we've got a girl and, and I see what she has to, I, I do think it's different for girls, but I'd like to get your take on it. Yeah, I'm interested. I've never had a proper sit down with Katie to sort of find out what mm. she thinks about it all. But I mean, it's, it's interesting because we were looking back at some old sort of promo stuff for like sort of things that were written about us, things that were written about me the 90s the language they used the way that they described women in that era mm -hmm. and this was the indie press the indie press that were like so fucking sanctimonious about themselves you know we're so yeah. bright on and we're so decent and this is you know and it was just crap you know the way that mm -hmm. they wrote about women the way they wrote about me i just i look back on it now and i'm just like i'm a bit more shocked in retrospect even though i was at the time you know it was quite hard coming through being a woman at the center of a band because there weren't many and so yeah. you were looked at as a novelty and it was very much under the microscope and i thought there was such a different level of judgment that kind of was meted out on the, the women that were in bands at that time it was very different from the guys who were in all, all, all male bands it just didn't get it you know mm -hmm. it just didn't happen in the way that it happened for us um so yeah i kind of i think i'm more cross about it now because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're young you don't care and you just get on with it you know so yeah, i think you're right though and and i've i've watched some like old interviews with you and and you know been reading through comments or I've read articles, all the articles, and, and it is strange that the way that people just just speak about you in a way that, and it's not, it shouldn't be like like that. Yeah, it made me angry. It was a weird, it was a weird culture to be honest, because those the people in the sort of the indie press at the time, they sort of saw themselves as gatekeepers, and there was an essence of the cancel culture that we've got now. So you know, we had people at the enemy said we're going to ruin Sleeper's career, and that was that was categorically said to our press officer, we're going to ruin them. We've had it, we've had it with her, we're going to ruin them, you know, and we were sort of dealing with all kinds of stuff like that. And people were saying, you know, this would happen all the time. You couldn't get a cover picture if it was, unless it was just me, they wouldn't take photographs of the whole band or they would take photographs of the whole band and then they'd cut them, cut them mm. out. And then they would kind of, you know, why is it just her? And it'd be like, well, because you won't let it be any other way. Um, you know, I got called a witch and they printed sort of pictures of me as a witch in the kind of, Jesus. in the press of the 90s. It's just... So looking back now, and just like, and I think about my daughter growing up, and I'm just, you know, what the hell were they on? I still, I'm still trying to work it out. So I'm, I'm still Do you think it's better now? Do you think we've come forward? I don't know. I think it's different now. I think it's different. What is, how does Katie feel about it? Was it, has Katie had, I mean, she's sort of part, she's such a part of your unit, you know, and she's such a brilliant musician. I'm imagining she gets kind of talked about for that. I mean, she's a great, great bass player. She's yeah, yeah, she does. And she and a lot of people really respect what she does because she is she is incredible and, and she, she deserves is. it fully. But every now and again, she, she will get like a comment or a good for a girl, which she hates, or, <laughs> or just like patronizing sound guys that are like, oh, is this your boyfriend's band? Or like there's been, there's been like that every now and again and she hates it or we used to go and do like an open mic night on the reg and this guy knew Kate and knew that she was an incredible but she Kate really is an incredible bass player like she's up there with anybody and the guy used to like put the bass on her and like you know turn turn it up like she didn't know what she was doing and I feel like I've experienced that for quite a long time but I think on the whole generally it's yeah. not um she doesn't get worked up about it but no. there's a, there is a thing that i do think there's kind of that is still a part of the culture where they kind of the press especially and social media they seem to like broken women so that's mm. the story they like so the, the sort of myth of the, the broken emotional tragic woman you know it's a sort of kind of struggling and they love that they absolutely love it and if you're not if you've kind of got a different sort of take on it and it's kind of more it just isn't that i think I think they struggle with that a little bit still. Mm. They love that. They love that sort of kind of punished, broken, emotionally damaged woman as a kind of a, a, a genre. I think still. Oh well, the enemy aren't relevant anymore. They're all losing out. We're taking <laughs> over now. Exactly. This is the modern age, and we don't yeah. need it. We do our own press. What's it like touring with Blur? Is it better than touring with us? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was, you can imagine, it was a really mad time of just the whole of that sort of Britpop thing was breaking. Mm. Um, it was pretty wild. Lots of, there was, it was very druggy. It was very, yeah. you know, debauched sort of time. <laughs> and we were new to it. So that was like our first proper tour. So we kind of got wow. sort of thrust into this sort of crazy world. And the gigs were, were incredible. So it was like, you know, park life, park life tour and, 
you know, Damon was just breaking as this sort of kind of sort of almost like a demigod of yeah. sort of, of grip pop, you know, people were going insane. Um, so we just kind of tried to enjoy it as best we could. I, I can't imagine. I'm, we're all big fans of Blur, so. <laughs> Are you going to do any more sleeper albums? I think we're going to we'll definitely do some more music, yeah. It's kind of, everything's sort of taking a bit of a backseat for a bit, but I just, you know, it's it makes you feel great, doesn't it? Yeah. I think the thing that I'd forgotten is how music sort of takes you out of yourself. You know, it just kind of, it just takes you to, to a different place. And it's the most, in some ways, it's the most escapist thing you can do. And you just pull mm-hmm. yourself into a creative process. And it just feels like you're sort of feeding yourself on some sort of strange level, I think. So I think that's the thing I enjoyed the most of all about the whole sort of thing that we did. I love going back on stage and those gigs are amazing. But when you just sort of, we've got a little attic room up, upstairs and just me and Andy were upstairs sort of kind of working out demos and writing new songs. Yeah. And sort of discovering that you can still do it and you still write a song that pleases you. Because it's always about that, isn't it? In the first place you go, you, you sort of play it yourself and go, actually, I really like this. And if you, if you like it, if you hope it might sort of translate to someone else. And that's kind of, it's quite a little magic process, I think. Uh, my girlfriend Lara's always laughing at me because I'll be like <laughs> sat, sat in the other room and just strumming a guitar and just like, I think like songs kind of come straight away when they're decent. Yeah, and so that's like- so true. That's so true. If a good one comes really fast. It does, yeah. Right? So I'll just be sat there and, and the song will be happening. It's like, I'm not even writing it. It's just like happening. And I'll just be laughing my head off like, ah! And she's always like, have you written another one? I'm like, yeah. Like, it, it, cause it, it fills me with like joy to, to sit yeah. there and write and, and when you've actually do something. And then the whole process of it, and then you go and record it, that's an amazing experience. You know, the first time you take it out live and then when people start to learn it, I can't yeah. imagine doing anything else other than this. Apart from maybe I'll write some books as well. Yeah, you won't have to do anything else, Tom. Um, I hope else. not. I ain't got anything else. I ain't got no GCSEs. I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't work. It's, gonna, it's working brilliantly. You guys well, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming and talking no, to me today. It's a pleasure. It's been dead nice. Lovely to see you. Bye.